Hello, I'm Cheryl Hicks. I'm the Executive Director and CEO of the Toilet Board Coalition. We're a global uh, business-led network of uh, organizations that are building the sanitation economy. We've started this uh, video series to, uh, to spotlight the various business solutions and businesses we've been working with uh, together with our network over the past five years. Uh, and I'm really pleased to have with me today uh, a, a growing company um, based in Rwanda called Pit Vidura. We have with us the, the founder, Rachel Schuyler, and the general manager, uh, Nicholas, uh, with us today to share the Pit Vidura story um, and, uh, and, and understand the, uh, the solutions that you're bringing to the, the sanitation economy. So over to you, Rachel and Nicholas. Tell us the uh, Pit Vidura story and journey. Sure, so Pit Vidura is a sanitation logistics um, company. So what that means is we focus specifically on the logistics of fecal sludge management, moving it from one place to another. Um, in the sanitation economy, we think there are a lot of businesses that specifically focus on toilets. There are a lot of specific businesses that focus on um, treatment, but without a way to get the waste from one place to another, the whole sanitation value chain breaks down. So we deliver services to households um, by collecting their waste and taking it to a safe place um, where it could be treated or disposed of. Um, Nicholas, do you want to add to that? Maybe say something about our technology that we're developing as well. Yep. Yeah, so uh, in, uh, in particular, uh, we are developing a technology which can be able to help us be able to serve customers or clients who are located in urban dense areas, uh, highly populated areas where the normal or the other regular exhaust trucks or other business, uh, uh, business owners who usually doing sanitation cannot be able to reach. So our technology allows us to be able to reach uh, more uh, dense area by using a, a double vacuum system uh, where uh, our truck can be able to go into deep uh, much much more on those uh, dense populated area than the other uh, regular exhaust companies. Yeah, so and we're able to reach households that have previously never been reached and been just um, financially and physically, geographically out of reach um, for for most formal services. The, the logistics of, uh, of, uh, of the circular economy, <laughs> which is, which is uh, absolutely, as you pointed out, a, a key gap in the ecosystem as we develop the sanitation economy and, and really turn to the reuse um, of these valuable resources. Um, you know, logistics is a, is a clear area for, for innovation and, um, and new models. So it's so really happy to have Pit Vidura uh, uh, leading the way in, in filling that gap. Can you talk a little bit more about, um, you know, about the innovation side? You talked about the, the technology, um, but, but how you came to this particular model, um, uh, you know, as an improvement uh, upon other, other things that you had seen. What was the innovation there? Right. So um, just back to Nick, what Nicholas was saying, you know, there are other exhaustor trucks um, in the market who can provide services to select clients, but those exhaustor trucks cannot reach um, low income areas. Um, it's not financially viable for them to even try to serve those low income areas um, and they don't have the technology to do so. Um, so what we've done is really created a package that can allow um, exhaustor trucks to go and serve those areas and give um, exhaustor trucks more business. So for example, um, we have a call center that aggregates demand whenever someone needs uh, an empty, they call in our call center. Our call center then puts them in our database and looks and see who else um, in the neighborhood needs an empty. Um, and so by geographically clustering our demand and scheduling our trucks to only serve clusters of households in certain areas, we can reduce the cost of emptying. Um, you know, with this call center clustering, we can serve um, two times more households per day. Um, we can serve double the households per day. Um, 
it, it allows customers to um, sort of talk to their neighbors and say, hey, you know, there's pit are coming to town today, do some of that demand aggregation themselves. And then the rest we do on the back end by um, just keeping up this very robust database such that when one person needs it in one area, we can um, see who else needs it in that area. So that's one thing we do. We cluster households to lower the cost of service. And then- through the technology, thing, through the digitization you mentioned. Yes, exactly. And another thing that we do is um, on the technology side is we have that double vacuum pump that Nicholas talked about. Um, normal exhauster trucks can't, you know, go into these narrow alleyways that are characteristic of these low income areas. So we've developed a, um, a sort of add on to a portable pump system called the evac that allows us to sort of daisy chain pumps together and, um, you know, physically reach those households that are out of reach. Um, anything more you'd like to say, Nick? Yeah, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the reason for that is that the, these people who are out of reach, when they reach, when they reach out to this other um, uh, exhaust company, the problem usually is the distance. The where they are located and where the truck can be able to reach is usually the problem. And they are being turned off. The other, so the other company will not be able to reach them. So they sort of the ways of emptying their toilet, which is they go to the manual emptiers who are going to empty the toilet during the night and dump the waste to the environment. That's but right. for, uh, yeah. But for us, uh, with our technology, we don't turn out. Uh, we focus on those people because we have this double double vacuum technology. Like we can be able to reach much more deeper uh, into those areas than other exhaust uh, business companies. That's what usually makes us unique from the other. More, more, people, add, um, I'll, more I'll people. More people, more efficient. Sorry, Rachel, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and, I, and, and I'll add on to that, an additional layer. So that's sort of the base layer of our technology. And now we're working to drive costs even lower, um, you know, by, by working on the financial model. So we just finished an engagement with EY, um, for example, um, the EY Ripples team, where we really teased out a uh, price differentiation structure whereby we will be serving a, a certain number of businesses and refugee camps and these sort of higher paying um, clients to offset the cost of serving those low income clients. You can imagine that serving a hotel or a school or a refugee camp may be much easier, um, an easy win, if you will, compared to serving the low income. Um, so we've really worked hard over the past year. This is one of um, our, our core focuses right now to um, tease out that additional segment, that premium service, um, so that we can offset the cost of serving a low income household so that we could expand our business even lower into the pyramid um, through this um, internal cross subsidy system. Fantastic. So, I mean, as you say, the innovation was really to be able to serve more people. You're saying, Rachel, also to be able to uh, go, go deeper into um, the, uh, uh, the income uh, levels uh, through different differentiated services. Um, and, uh, and it sounds more efficiency through, through digitization. Um, fantastic. Can, can you talk a little bit about the, um, um, the back end? So what, what happens to all of the, the waste uh, that, that you collect? Sure. Actually, in Rwanda, uh, we were working with a company that was turning the waste into solid fuel. Um, that company is not around in Rwanda anymore, but we're actively looking for partners to sort of replace that um, part of the value chain. Um, but we do take it to a centralized place in Kigali. It's where all the other exhaustor trucks take their waste um, and get it out of the dense communities into a a disposal area. And do you see that part of your business um, being a, a bigger part of your business in the in the future? The, um, the you know the sale of the of the waste to to other providers that are upcycling it. I mean, I think ideally, yes. You know, in a functioning resource recovery economy, I think yes, that waste is valued by the back end producer. Um, I don't think we see that so much right now in, in, in the broader sector. I, I don't see so many um, cases where the back-end producer of reused products is paying the collector 
for for that feedstock. But I do think that that is the future of resource recovery. And when we see that, we'll know, bing, it's working. Um, we strategically, uh, you know, have decided to focus specifically on the logistics, on the collection and the disposal. But we, again, are actively looking for partners um, in Kigali to work on that part of the value chain. And what's the size of the market, you know, in, in Kigali, where, where you're operating um, in, in your, uh, where you're targeting the, the size of, of impact that, uh, that you are expecting to have with your business? Sure. Um, there's, there's 3 million people in Kigali and that, that figure is growing every day. Um, I think 7% of the waste is managed um, properly, if you will. Um, so it's a huge, huge proportion of the market that is, um, you know, untouched by formal services. And um, for us, you know, we're, we're a live lab, we're developing these systems, we're developing these technologies in the hopes that we can take those technologies and equip other exhauster trucks with um, the tools and the systems that they need to start, um, you know, addressing that huge market and growing their businesses. Um, so that's something else that um, Nicholas and his team have been working on this year, the sort of um, franchising out. Um, and that's a big, that's a big, um, that's a big project. You know, this, this is a sort of cottage industry. Those guys are tough and they're not necessarily ready or willing to um, take on new technologies and go into those markets. They do like the easy wins. Um, we've seen that in our experience. Um, but, you know, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation and it's all about building relationships. So um, we do see that being the future of our growth, not only in Kigali, but in other markets that have exhaustor trucks that are very underutilized, um, you know, with a giant market sitting there waiting to be served. And uh, yeah, absolutely huge, you know, huge need and, and huge need for, for innovation. So I like your, your phrase of, a, of an innovation lab, <laughs> um, which, is, which is really needed. Uh, and, and Nicholas, maybe um, from sort of the on the ground perspective with COVID-19 and the global health crisis, we, we, find, each other, we, we find ourselves in and, and uh, a lot of, you know, changes happening in, in many marketplaces. Can you, can you tell us your perspective on uh, what's changed um, in Kigali, if anything, in, you know, and for your business? business and, and where you see some, um, uh, some, some new opportunities or some, some pivoted uh, opportunities uh, based on this, this new world we're living in? Yeah, yeah. so global COVID-19, uh, global pandemic, uh, it's, it impacted a lot of businesses. Uh, but in our uh, sanitation, we saw in the last quarter 75% increase uh, in sales. And this is because right now, uh, hygiene or being, uh, being, uh, being clean or cleaning your hearts or this personal hygiene is, 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 is in, in, in everyone's mind uh, this moment. And not only, not only washing, your, uh, washing your heart with the, uh, with the regulation of the, the COVID-19, but also personal hygiene, even in people's homes, it's top of everyone's mind. And it made us, uh, on uh, the last quarter, uh, sell uh, or serve more customers, 75% increase in the customers that we serve. And I think- More requests for the service. Yeah. Yeah, that's something, uh, that's something we have seen uh, uh, in, our, in, in, our, in our business for the last, uh, for the last Yeah, it'd be really interesting to do, you know, we, we did this very in-depth willingness to pay um, study last year and it would be so interesting to do something like that again and see how that's changed after people's um, education has changed after the government mm -hmm. has dr been driving home these messages I mean we're really working hand in hand with the government here um, on educating people reminding people you know our call center which mm -hmm. operates um, seven days a week now um, when people call in they remind them you know Pivoter is not the only way you can, um, you know, keep your family safe and clean, remember to wash your hands, to do all these other um, preventative measures. So um, you, you also see this, you know, collaboration, I think, in, in the sphere that you have, that we haven't seen before between the government partners and us and the community leaders all sort of working together to make sure that people are safe. 
Really interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing um, what's happening on the ground in, in Kingali and 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 so future outlook. I mean, uh, you know, coupled with uh, the the experience that you've had so far and and um, uh, the innovation that you've you're already working on, plus our new context. Um, how do you see the future outlook uh, for for Kit Fedora? What's on the on the horizon? Nick, do you want to take that one? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the future, the future horizon for. Yeah, I mean, I can I can start and you can um, fill in, but I think we're really focused um, on reaching that that bottom of the pyramid. You know, um, in a pandemic world, we see the inequality really, you know, increasing. That gap between um, accessibility is being very highlighted, you know, people who have been geographically out of reach are even more out of reach than before, you know, with the sort of drop in services and transportation and um, the, the, the loss of jobs. That's just highlighting this gap that we see between um, the rich and the poor. And we, um, you know, as a company, it's our priority to, um, to make sure that no one is left behind. So, we are focusing very much on um, developing those financial systems, that price differentiation model, and really refining our hardware technology to reach um, those out of reach folks. Um, and we're really, we're really happy to be working with Lixel um, and their wonderful product designers on the hardware. Um, we've made significant strides there. Um, uh, Daigo and Nicholas have been working very closely on, you know, new design features of our double vacuum pump and we're really excited about that. Um, and we'll, we'll see how, how much, you know, penetration into the bottom of the pyramid that, um, you know, these new features will allow us to, to make. Thank you. Well, thank you to Pit Vidura, really uh, going that extra mile to uh, to, to reach the, the full mile um, with, with access to safely managed sanitation and, and continuing to, to innovate uh, along the way. We really thank you for, for sharing your uh, solution, uh, business solutions for the sanitation economy with us today. And uh, we're so happy to be working with Pit Vidura in our uh, 2020 uh, sanitation economy accelerator cohort. And, um, and we look forward to hearing more from Pit Vidura in the future. Namaste. Thanks, Cheryl. Thank you.